Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a loopable wave texture in Blender. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I have made some changes to my website. So you can go over there, download some free uh, alpha textures if you want. Uh, so let's just get started. So here in the default scene, I'm just going to delete the default cube, pressing A, X and then delete. Then I'm going to turn on screencast key so you guys can follow along. So my keys are on the right bottom corner. All right, now I'm going to hit Shift A to add in a plane. And it can just be this size. Then shift A to add in a camera. And I want this to have no rotation and no location data. So I can hit Alt G to reset the location just to make sure. And Alt R to reset the rotation. Uh, similarly, we can press Alt S to clear the scale. Uh, but this doesn't have any scale, so it's not necessary. Uh, but just how so you know. So now I can hit G and Z to move it up to something like this. Just so it's above the plane. Then in zero, I can preview the camera and I want to kind of uh, get the borders of this plane. It's not necessary, but I just want to do it this way. So uh, it's like no depth perception. It's just a flat image. So I go over to camera data, uh, set the type to orthographic and now set the scale to two because our plane is two meters wide. So we need to set the scale to two. And now we have like a perfect border on the edge, which is amazing. All right, now for a render engine. I want to set this to Eevee, of course, because it renders uh, quicker than just uh, cycles. And there's not really a reason why we should go cycles. All right, so in the plane, I want to open up the shader editor, click new, call this something like wave. Uh, just make sure to save the scene as well. Uh, in this wave texture, I want to delete the principal PSDF because we are going to be using a emission uh, just so we don't get any shadows or anything like that, uh, no roughness or things like uh, like that. Just a, a unlit. All right, that is looking pretty white, but not white enough because we have uh, a color management system and that is making it kind of a grayish. If I take the color picker right here and pick this color, you will see that it's not white at all. It's uh, halfway white. So in the render settings, I want to go over to color management, set the view transform to standard. And now I want to change the value of course to one again, and then pick this color to check. And as you can see, it's still one. So basically what uh, AGX does and uh, things like Filmic is uh, kind of change the colors around a little bit, which looks really great for like realistic scenes, uh, but not so much for um, maybe stylized or things like this, where we want the colors to be exactly uh, what we tell them to be. So just keep that in mind if you're opening up a Blender scene, if you want a perfectly red character, you need to change your view transform to standard. All right, now, so for the wave texture, we can just shift A to add in a wave texture, simple enough. And with control shift and left mouse button, I can preview this. As you can see, it looks something like this, where the black parts are the deepest parts of the sine wave, and then the white parts are the, the highest parts, essentially. Um, you might have learned this formula in a math class. I can write it up for you with the annotate tool. Let's see. Uh, if I remember, it's A, then minus, uh, not X plus, B times the sinus of uh, something like a C, with C being 2Y, divided by X, and then, uh, oh no, not X, it's something, Y, T, capital T, and X minus Z. Great, I remember. And you can change some parameters in the wave texture as well. Uh, for us, we're just going to ignore this because this is uh, things nerds learn, and we are not nerds on this channel. So we're just going to make a wave texture. I always like to have clean edges because I don't like this like blurry edge. So I like to add in a color ramp, uh, but you could also use a math node set to greater than or less than, for example. I just like the uh, color ramps, like a visual nature. I can see how much white is in there and how much black. So for example, if I set this to 0.5, uh, these lines are the same width. I want to go for something like 0.9. So we have a little bit of white and the rest is black. And that's great. And I also want to distort this to get this really nice pattern appearing. I then want to set the detail to something I like. So uh, most of the time something low, 
if you want you can do high but that doesn't really fit like the height map style work we have going on here so yeah go crazy with whatever you want i'm just going to set my detail to let's say one for example and the detail basically kind of uh, changes the width a little bit of uh your, your lines you can change some other parameters if you want like making this a uh, saw wave or a triangle but a sign works well for me i don't really see a need to change that uh, the thing i want to do for looping this is kind of playing with the phase offset uh, because this fa phase offset is really important in uh, making this wave texture loop uh, because essentially as i told you with the formula every two pi the period is uh, like finished it uh, loops back around so every two pi in here uh, will be like the same image as the first frame and it will just loop like that so we need to set keyframes for uh, two pi so for example if i set two times pi in this uh, value box you need to pay attention to the texture if i hit enter it's exactly the same image and that's basically what we want to keyframe in the timeline so if i open up the timeline here i can go to frame zero then set a keyframe for the phase offset at zero so hitting i on this value box uh, to view this you need to select a plane and then select the wave texture node so i can view it in a timeline and then i want to go to something like uh, frame 120 so we'll shorten the timeline to that and then i want to type in two and then uh, shift eight which will be the uh, star and then type in pi and this is how you can do math in blender essentially and it will just calculate what two times pi is then i can hit i again to add in a keyframe then select both of these keyframes and hit right mouse button set the interpolation to linear uh, just so it loops nicely anyways if we don't do that this is what it will look like it will kind of ease out and that just basically tells you that the person didn't do a good job of loping it but we are amazing at loping things if you want to change like the seed of this you can get a factor like a mapping node like ctrl t and then like uh, change the location like this and you can kind of play with the seed uh, z is usually a good seed because this plane is like infinitely uh, thin so if you move it up along the z-axis it will look like you're playing with the seed and can of course play with the scaling uh, with this whatever you want so yeah that's how you do this i will leave this uh, project file on my patreon for you to download uh, i hope this was helpful if it was helpful please leave a like and subscribe i would really appreciate it and that's basically it that's all i have to say a uh, really quick video uh, but i've been pretty busy so that's uh what's up mm -hmm.